The elephant in the room weighs 575 pounds. Yamaha can't sell it, adventurers don't want it, and nobody can think anything besides... Oh, crikey. 575 pounds? Ladies and gentlemen, the oil tanker. And therein lies the point. It's massive, unmaneuverable, and most people think it has no business being in the wilderness. Except it does. It really, really does. Ooh. I'm sure it's not the most fun off-road. The bike has no personality on dirt. Yet it is functional. The engine is a stressed member of the frame. And that's going to let it sit lower down. And that lets the tank hold fuel lower down. The center of gravity is so low that it feels like a 650 from up here. I mean, sure, a lot of motorcycles are balanced enough for slow speeds, but the Super 10, I mean, it balances for a standstill. <laughs> Highways are about the only place you'll notice the weight. It clamps the ground like a freight train, completely unperturbed by dirty air or semi-trucks or tornadoes. There is one other situation where you'll notice the weight. Three, two, one. I foresee no weight-related issues so long as I keep the engine moving itself with the steady assurance of 112 horsepower, 86 torques. Now this thing should be zippy. Holy Steven Harper, this engine is boring. Well, I didn't think you could make 1200 cc's this sleepy. The Yamaha engineers officially found two horsepower and 1.5 foot-pounds in the 2014 redesign. Woo. But rumor has it they actually stumbled on a lot more. Emission and noise regulations pushed their bounty into the black market, the aftermarket, where an ECU reflash unlocks the 20 horsepower that they stashed in that engine. Straight off the showroom floor, the only way to describe this is business-like. The Teneri has a touring sweep back on the bars. My controls are served to me the way a first-class flight attendant serves Dom Perignon. Shit balls, these stock risers are tall. And this is the first time that an unmodified ADV bike has been ready to rock a standing riding position with my six foot three frame. I don't really book first class, but if you skip seat selection and then ignore the guy who calls your name at the gate, then you'll be the last to get assigned a seat. And when they overbook economy, that means they'll have to put you in first class. That is what sitting on the Tenere feels like. It's so spacious, you'll wonder how you ever survived the cheap seats of other ADV bikes. Frugal bastards. Unless Yamaha has some kind of patent, shame on every other manufacturer for not spending on these. Highway vibration swallowing rubber, but understanding pressure, that vanishes, and it serves up serrated metal to grip my boot. I mean, that's how a dual-purpose peg should work. Why the hell aren't we getting that? Every other ADV bike transitions better than this. The Tenere flicks like molasses Ooh, from one lean angle to the next. It's slow. Probably because the bike wants to fall into every corner. And I find myself counter-steering against a lean more than I do initiating one. I hate it. I changed my mind. I mean, yes, it's unnerving when the Tenere tries to corner for you, but also strangely effortless. And once you get used to it, this is a fatigue-free way to ride aggressively. And I don't even have to use my rear brake. Just tap the front and the Tenere electronically adds rear input. And this takes no energy whatsoever. You'd never know this bike was a quarter ton. Three, two, one. I will say, when riding like an asshole, the front has a tendency to push from all that weight. So you've got to ride the Tenere rather inappropriately 
to make that happen. There are two modes to ride this bike. Sport is straight up unenjoyable in the city. It's not fast, it's just jumpy. Feels like a 1990s sport bike in the worst possible way. And then touring mode, which I'm clicking to here. Touring is boring. Yeah. Oh shit. Touring mode is ideal for forgetting your motorcycle license. It has all the shouty, sharp movements of Mother Teresa. A new cop in the world would pull over this bike in touring mode. Except maybe for a closer look, it looks surprisingly tight in real life. And apart from the military style dash and nav bar, it's soft. And the air scoops and the bullet fairing. Everything seems malleable, molded. It feels like the Saharan clay that it was born from. In 1979, the Yamaha marks an obscure new race as their own. It's called the Paris Dakar Rally, and the XT500 is altogether dominant. Then in 1983, the Tenere is born. XT600Z, produced so average Joe could experience what a rally race feels like. Yamaha defined this category. I mean, they were the coolest kid on the block. Every other manufacturer was just playing catch up and playing coffee cat. But nowadays, the Super 10, as it's known by those afraid of mispronouncing Tenere, has become the fat kid in school. Uh, KTM calls them chunky, Triumph calls them boring, Honda and Suzuki call them rich, and the Prom Queen R1200 GS has the most searing burn of all. Copy, copy, copy cat. 19 and 17 inch wheels spoked so they won't crack on me. Tubeless so I can quickly plug them to get out of a sticky spot exactly like an R1200. This damn key is about the only thing that risks leaving me stranded out here. It's starting to go spiral just from turning the rather awkward pannier lock. Shaft drive is problem proof. Where have I seen that before? <sighs> Oh, this thing weighs as much as an R1200. <sighs> so I fell because the ABS wouldn't let me lock up the rear. I kind of dropped it on my foot, but I don't think it did any damage. Now, how do I get rid of that pesky ABS? That's traction control. That's cruise control. And this switch gear is clunky. Reminds me of a snowmobile my mom used to have. Uh, come on, it can't be that hard. So, turns out you put the bike on its center stand and then run the engine in second gear to make the ABS freak out and die. Easy. Difficult. Rock climb. On these bullshit battle wing tires? <laughs> uh, no way this works. No way. No way. No way! The way Artenere makes grip is fascinating, actually. First, they shove the radiator over to one side, then they moved the engine forward in its place. That made it just easy to have an uncommonly long swing arm. A long, light swing arm, which is cast from aluminum. Most of this frame is steel, and steel bends. Enough to take the jitters out of this washboard riding. So heavy frame, but low unsprung mass on a long lever, meaning the suspension has an easy time rebounding the swing arm to the ground, giving the rear more time to find grip. Unbelievable grip. And this thing rides like a steamroller, picks up choppy fire roads like they were paved. Another grip maker is the 270 degree crank. It fires da dum, da dum, da dum. And then those long brakes give the tire plenty of time to hook up between pulses. 
just how the Tenere can find its feet on these tires, I have no idea. I gotta remember to explain that when I get back to the studio. And that's how it works. Efficiently and with zero personality. The Tenere was fun, motorcycles always are, but it left no aftertaste. My pulse isn't racing from the speeds I didn't hit. I don't feel sore from the saddle sores I never got. I can't recount the trail side repairs I didn't have to make. Only when I look back on the 24 hours and put my thoughts in order does a conclusion present itself. The Tenere is boring, and therein lies the point. It balances with the steady assurance of a freight train. It's slow, but also strangely effortless to ride aggressively. The bike has no personality on dirt, yet it serves up unbelievable grip. To get out of a sticky spot, the Tenere is just easy, easy, easy. And when you run something for 24 hours straight, well, easy is what you want.